Hello everyone, and welcome to another day of the StarCast TV Star League. I am solo here again, and we've got a Terran versus Zerg. It's going to be Rush versus Soma, and this should be an exciting matchup because as I mentioned in previous cast, tons of history between these two players, and of course this is Soma's last tournament before he went off to military. So, looking very forward to seeing the play from both sides. I think actually the last time I saw these two players play in a tournament, maybe ASL from three seasons ago. And if I remember correctly, Soma got the best of Rush there. I think it ended up winning 3-0. It was a lot of counterattacking, if I remember. Like Soma, as soon as he saw Rush move out, he's like, oh, well, I'm just gonna counterattack you because I know you don't have an army. And while Rush did not defend those counterattacks very well. so. Hopefully he's pulled it together this time and we can have a closer series. If we can take a look at the bracket of how the round of eight is shaping up. We've already done Royal versus Snow. Yes, it's out of order. But now we're going back into the top side of the bracket. Rush versus Soma, Best versus Beast, then Light versus Mini is remaining. I think all the series should be very close. I think every player in their respective match can win but we know already that Snow's in the round of four. So let's get into our map picks for today's match. We've got, okay, Luna, a unique map, an old school map. Then we've got the standard Vermeer, standard retro, standard polypoid, and then champion, which we haven't really seen that many games on. I think the most games I've seen played on this map are just the games that I see on our Tosa stream. Interesting bands here. Sandstorm being banned, I don't think that's a, you know, unexpected ban. Terran vs. Zerg on Blue Storm was always very difficult. Jungle Story, uh, you know, you've got those island bases, and a lot of Zerg players don't ever really get island bases. So I guess it's understandable. And with all that said, let's just get into our game. Let's get into Luna here and see who's going to start off up 1 0 in the series. Okay, so in the top right, we have the one and only. It is Rush. And then in the bottom left, this is his farewell tour. It is Soma. Now, everybody loves Soma, not just because he's a great player, but because he's one of the few players that innovates the meta. Even if I think your strategy is not the greatest. I love to see players attempt to change the meta. You know, I can only take so many Ling Muta games. I love to see mix-ins of Lurker play. I love to see the, you know, Ultraman, you know, fast upgrades. See what he comes up with though. Rush on the other hand, this guy in the past, mega aggressive, but he's toned it down a notch. He's more like light these days. He's more management style. He's still, of course, going to put on the pressure that you have to put on in Terran versus Zerg, but he's not going balls to the wall all the time. So we'll see what build orders we actually open up with. Seems like Soma, unless I miss the D, uh, the Overlord, this could be a pool first. I think actually I may have missed the Overlord. Yeah, it's, it's building already, so it is most likely going to be a 12 hatch. I guess it still could be 12 pool, and as I say that, there it is. It is actually going to be an 11 pool. So interesting opener from Soba. I'm actually a big fan of 12 pool, and the reason I say that is as a Terran player, getting pushed out of the Zerg main is kind of hard to figure out what they're doing. If they end up going Mutas, of course you have to go for the eBay opener. But they could go for Lurkers, and if you're stuck going turrets versus a fast Lurker play, well, you could just be outright dead. And one of the things about 12 pool, or in this case 11 pool, is it hits so fast that by the time you scan, Lurkers could actually already be on their way to your base. So if you blow a scan and it ends up being Lurkers, all of a sudden you don't have any more energy and you could just outright die. So already, I'm liking Soma's build. It is low econ. Let's see how Rush punishes this. We've already got an interesting move from Rush, which is this late scout. This is a 15, 16 scout from him. A lot of times you're doing something like an 11 or 12 scout. So he has no intel right now. 
And this is what makes a 12 pool dangerous is because now the Ling should be out. I'm hoping he has a couple on hold position on his ramp. That way that this SCV doesn't get in. But lucky scout pattern from Rush. He is going to probably find him first. And there we go. And now it is imperative that these Lings hold the ramp. And as I say that, he's not. And that means that the SCV gets in. And all of a sudden, I'm not that big of a fan of this build order anymore. Now, Rush has full intel. His build was not uh, changed up at all, really. He built two Marines into expansion. He doesn't have to build a bunker. He doesn't have to build any type of SimCity at the natural. And now he's just going to have big eco lead versus Soma, who's low econ and has done no damage with this early pool. Now, to be fair to Soma, Rush is someone that legitimately plays eight racks, you know, upwards of maybe 50% of the time. So this could have been designed to just make sure that he doesn't die to an eight racks and he just wants to shut this down immediately. But he's in real trouble here. I do see back in Rush's main, gas has gone down. There's no eBay, I don't think. So that means that this is an academy opener from him, or it should be an academy opener. Still one racks, there's the academy. Okay, this is an interesting play. One racks, academy halfway done. He doesn't even have a second one started. That signals to me that we could have a move out of even just one medic, maybe one medic, one fire bat. The SCV does spot the spire timing, so he knows that it is pretty damn fast. It's about 20 to 30 seconds faster than normal. So if he does want to put on pressure play, he's going to have to get out onto the map very quickly. But that does leave him open to counterattacks. Because like I said, it's this, this is only one barracks right now. Academy about done. It is always so ballsy to me to see Marines move out into speedling. He, of course, had intel in the main larva production. But if you're playing on ladder, I've played so many players that sneak in lings being built at the natural. And when you think there's only six lings and they show up with like 10, you could lose your marine ball instantly. I like the SCV pulled off. Give it a little bit more defense to the marines. And there's that single medic. Now, most likely, this next unit has to be a fire bat. But look at this fire timing. It's done. So Mita's going to be on the way. You're not going to be able to get across the map. And I feel like maybe this academy wasn't actually designed to put pressure on, but more to rush his upgrades. If you can have stim in range by the time Spire or by the time Mita's are out, obviously your Marines are incredibly strong. And we do see a scan go down at the natural. I think that's smart. You want to get a read to see if Zerg snuck any sort of tech there. You also want to see if this guy built any sunkins now that he saw that there's no sunkins despite soma going low eco he's at least recovered his eco somewhat i mean there is move out so it should be what six lings five or so mutas facing up against maybe one group of marine medic i don't think one group of marine medic can be that dangerous right now that's why you see rush just feeling like he can just hold the line hold his main Good turret positioning, good bunker positioning. It doesn't really look like there's really any angle to attack from Soma, but as I say that, there go two Marines. And now, he's getting into that sweet spot. Back in BSL, everybody knows this spot. This is the G spot, man. This is the Gypsy spot. You get a couple of SCV knocks. And he gets out without losing any single Muta. So already, that's well done from Soma. He keeps Rush sub-30 SCVs. Rush, is that a... Okay, so he's rushing factory. Two racks factory. So he's going to be rushing his tech, but his marine count is extremely low. And I've seen in ASL games where he'll make moves like this. Okay, we've got Mutas jumping on that turret. The second turret ends up not dying, and that's critical for Rush. Good scan. He focuses down another, another Mutalist there. But what I was going to say about the, the factory is we've seen games from Royal in ASL where he's rushed the factory like this, and he's been caught with too few units. So if Soma can whittle down this ball, he may be able to actually overrun Rush here. Another SCV goes down. This is really well done from Soma. And if we look at the supplies, despite the opener, we've now got supply lead for Soma. Still down 10 workers, but he should be able to recover that pretty nicely now that his third hatch is coming up. And you got to remember, he's still got... You know, even though it's a small amount of lings, yeah, they can soak up some hits. So anytime this marine ball moves out, 
he's got to be worried that potentially the Lings could also help engage. There's the starport. Okay, we've got a Valkyrie. So we've seen this also in ASL where Rush and Royal both ended up going for a tank push plus Valkyrie combo. We'll see how this works because I did hear another scan go off and I haven't seen Hydrogen from Soma. So this could just be all in Mutaling. And the Mutas coming in. The fact that he's fighting these turrets signals to me that the Mutas must have plus one weapon. And there it is. They do have plus one weapon. And noticeably, Rush does not have any upgrades on his Marine. So actually, Soma may be able to knock down this natural. He does lose a lot of Marines there. But look, there's no turrets anymore. It's very hard to defend these SCVs without any turrets and without any upgrades and the funneling of the Marines on the Marine on the minerals. This is a lot of damage. Almost the entire SCV line is going to fall. There's not that many Marines left. Now, those were two good catches right there, taking down a couple more Mutalith. He desperately needed those shots. There goes another SCV. You're also going to factor in the splash damage. Splash from Mutalith do a lot of damage. Yeah, more and more SCVs falling. We almost have worker advantage for Soma at this point. There goes the Medic. The Medic is basically completely out of energy. I'm actually surprised that the Lings haven't run in here just yet. Soma, he's breached this natural, and that's a turret that's going to fall. All that's really remaining is the bunker. Now, we do have to remember, Rush is rushing into Valkyries. And even though right now this is obviously a great situation for Soma, if he can get a Valkyrie out, which he has gotten, and he can knock down or whittle down this Muta Ball, he'll be fine because there is still no Hydrogen, there's no Queen's Nest, there's no Evolution Chamber, there's no transition out of this play from Soma. Just now, the Hydrogen's gonna come down, but is that gonna be too late? Because once there's two Valkyries out, Rush may feel like, okay, I've gotta go. Good patrol micro from that Valkyrie. Rush has some of the best patrol micro. Okay, that is something I have not seen in a long time. That one split off on the Muta to soak up all the shots from that Valkyrie. That was nuts. Ooh, another good patrol shot. But I actually think Rush is going to move out in a second. He does have plus one weapon. He's got two Valkyries. He knows that Soma does not have armor on his view list. And he knows, he, or he's been scanning consistently, so he knows there's no lurkers. So if there's any moment of opportunity for him to get out onto the map, this is it. And he's got to do a lot of damage because he's down in workers. I would say he's probably even in production because three hatch versus four racks is kind of, you know, even-ish. But actually this counterattack from Soma has drawn Rush back again. Now that's a lot of damage. He does lose three or four Mutalists there. The Valkyrie count is three now. There's no way the Mutas can engage anymore. But as I say that, I see a big blob of units, and I think those are actually Scourge that were built. Anyways, we've got we've got Marines and Medics moving. No, actually, those are more Mutas. What? More Mutas and Scourge. He wants to fight this with just Muta Scourge, and he does critically have the armor upgrade now. So now, actually, I think the, the Marine Medic could actually lose to Mutaling. If he did not have armor here, I think easily the Marine will come. Now again, we've got another catch of the Marine. Okay, I thought we were actually going to have a base trade, but no. He is turning around, and I think that's a smart move. There's four Sunkins here. I think there's two or three at mid-left. All Soma has to do is not die here, and I feel like he's got this game in the bag. The worker count is just so dreadful for Rush. And that patrol micro right there, even though it looked like a simple thing to do, not easy to do to save all those Valkyries. He's gonna engage. There's not that many Marines on the ground. Where are the Hydras? There are no Hydras. There's Mutalus, and they are going to... I thought they were gonna explode, but they easily clean up this army. The one Valkyrie in the back tries to save the day, but that armor is really the game changer for Zerg right here. That really, really saved him. If there was no armor, I'm 100% sure the entire Muta would die, or Muta count would die, but Terran, as everybody knows, never out of it until they actually tap GG. He's got a decent sized army. Still, I don't notice any tanks coming out from his factory. So it is not going to be an easy push to break the Sunkins, but he has at least stabilized his natural again. But losing those three Valkyries, that is painful. Very expensive units. And he does build another one. And here come those Mutas once again. 
not able to get the connection and took a long time to take down that turret so actually took a lot of damage there he's not done the patrol micro is so good it's so good the muta muta control is just immaculate also oh the marines catch the mutas and did soma overstep he lost like four or five mutalists right there he's gonna come in and see the good news that hey this guy doesn't have an add-on onto his factory so i can't die to tanks but he's traded really badly right there now top left i don't know about this expansion this feels ambitious to say the least i still don't see a single lurker or hydra or anything if rush scans top left this base should be easy pickings for him there's still no lurkers i maybe with the hydrogen was a fake try and fake this guy to build tanks when i'm actually going mass air but he's gonna get punished for not actually building any lurkers the marine count is really high or was decently high they have one one upgrades and i think this game could be over the committal to the mutas was a little bit too long this base has been breached and the, once the hydrogen falls he's also not going to be able to build hydras at all so there's going to be no lurkers i don't think we ever had a transition into queen's nest and this seemed like a game that soma should have taken he had transitioned out of the 11 pool so nicely did such great damage with the mutas but he just stuck around on the mutas for way too long and now what do you do with zerg He's just going to counter, and look at this. Terran knows that the only move Zerg can do is counter. So he actually transfers all of his SCVs from his natural back to his main. Because if he saves the workers, he's fine. That's a really nice move from him. Now, I don't think he can get through the natural. There's just definitely not enough Marine Medic to get through six Sunkins. But he doesn't need to. The damage has been done. Oh, he's elevatoring into the main. But I don't know about this. The mutas are, I guess, out of position, so maybe he can actually get a double elevator in? No, this went about as I expected. Just gets instantly obliterated. If there was the, the Valkyrie to help support, I think that could have worked. But yeah, that was a bit of a donation there. Ooh, does not get the, the drop ship. Top left has still not been spotted. So that base does actually get up and running. And look at that, that's an upgrade you don't see that often. Plus two armor? That's an expensive upgrade, but that means Valkyries will do almost no damage to these Mutalists. So I'll give props to Soma here. He came up with a strategy that he was committed to. He said, hey, I'm playing Muta Man. I don't care if you got Valkyries. I don't care if you got Vessels. I'm going to commit to it. And he did go for the best counter to the Valkyries, which is mass armor. And he is expanding the bottom right also. But top right got spotted. I don't think the Zunkins were in time. This is most likely going to be a dead base guy. In fact, oh, that was a Nidus, I guess? I don't know what that was, but it got canceled. And the Mutas are going to engage again. There's just... The Valkyrie Marine Medic are just so strong versus pure Mutalist. This base is dead. A Medic at bottom right spotted that base also. The Rush knows about it. And he's been very diligent with his scans. He knows that the comp is just continuous mutas. Another scan goes off. I imagine it's probably in the main or the natural confirming that, hey, are you really still just building mutas, man? Don't you see me just running you over with Marine Medic? You gotta build something other than mutas. We've got attempted harassment at the natural again. He catches a Valkyrie, but unfortunately for him, we're way too far into the game now. That these catches yes of course they do they do matter a little bit but he just doesn't have the econ anymore that's that's the main issue if he could hide bases over and over and still support his mule list maybe that's a little bit different okay but he's getting a lot of damage done to this bio ball the medics don't seem to have a lot of energy he splashes those goodbye and this marine count that was pretty decent a moment, a moment ago all of a sudden that's down in the dumps this plus two armor, see you later, Valkyrie. Also, something to consider is that these Marines don't have their own plus two weapon power spike. So it's like you're fighting, uh, or you are fighting, with a uh, weapon to armor at disadvantage for Terran. There's the irradiate that we were waiting for, but an instant split. Okay, he gets the vessel. 
these, these medics don't have any energy anymore, so the uh, mutilists can still just shred these marines. Turk comes up. I think there's a drop or something bottom right. I see a, a small glimpse of gray at the bottom right corner, and that hatchery died. So it must have been a dropship play there. Takes down that base, and both players just back on two bases, but Soma trying to take mid left and top left again at the same time. More scans coming out. This very close. The, the fact that the Mutilus number is still so high and they have this plus two armor kind of makes the Valkyries pretty much useless. And this is just such a hard in, a, angle to engage into as Terran with the Marine Medic. His Medics are just permanently zero energy. He's basically not mining his natural anymore. He, he luckily has some gas so he can continue to build vessels. Did Soma really do this? Because it's starting to look like Soma actually really did this with just mass mutas. This is a wild game. Random marine in the center of the map. <laughs> Knocks down a drone. Soma, I think, actually got dropped at his natural. Oh, he did get dropped at his natural. And he lost. Oh, and his main. I didn't even see that. So his worker count goes down to 14. And all of his mutalists are across the map except for these three. So that was game-changing damage right there. Lings are going to clean it up, but Soma has no eco now, and that's going to alleviate a lot of the pressure onto Rush. Maybe it can buy him time to get out multiple vessels for some irradiates. Now you can see his bio count is huge. He's got a lot of Marines. It's going to be much harder now for the Mutalists to actually do damage. I also think another irradiate went off, so those Mutalists are probably softened up. Oh, but he goes in again. One meter falls. These are so good. They're so good. Four Marines. Ooh, doesn't. Oh, two, two upgrades. Crazy. Crazy upgrades. And that Marine ball that was huge a minute ago, all of a sudden, maybe one and a half groups. Maybe two groups now with the uh, reinforcements coming in. Another good irradiate. Oh, that did a lot of damage. That was a ton of damage. Is he going to really come in again and try and fight this army? He knows that this guy just doesn't have the energy on his medics. No turrets still. More SCVs falling. Karen is down to 20 workers now. 19 workers. 18 workers. Oh, un that drop got unscouted again, and he snuck across to mid-left. Gonna knock down this base, maybe. Can the Mutalist get here in time? Oh, he killed top left. So, he killed both bases? Dude, this is, this is crazy. Zerg's gonna win this fight, but he's gonna lose a couple Mutalists in order to win the fight. And Terran... First off, is up supply by about 20, and he's down six workers. So he's up about 25 supply with a huge well of marine medic, and he has two or three vessels. He's got three vessels there. I, I think he's done it. I, I think at this point, as long as he doesn't lose all of his SCVs here, Rush maybe is going to take this game. There's an irradiate. If there's a second one, there is. And... Man... Zerg is down to four Mutalists now. Still doing work with those three Mutas now. Make that two. <laughs> that that dropship just, just chilling right there. And there it is, GG. What a crazy game. What a crazy, crazy game from Soma. I actually do like Mutaling. And you can see that with armor, it's actually surprisingly good versus Valkyrie. But the drop play from Rush, how critical were those drops? He got bottom right, he moved out and killed mid left and top left, and then also dropped again at top left and got both bases. So well done from Rush. I think if I was him in that scenario, it would be one of those games where I'm just tilted that I can't mine my natural. But he kept his composure despite losing so many SCVs over and over. He macroed like a madman. How did he build so many Marines while losing them constantly and losing SCVs constantly? I have no idea. So let's get into game two. 
maybe Soma can come back in game two. His his play style, I mean, or his strategy was doing a lot of damage. It was just maybe we stuck on to Mutalus too long. If at any point there were lurkers, I think he saves those bases on the left side easily. And then what do you do as Terran? Your econ was so bad. So in the top left, we do have Soma down 0-1. And in the bottom right, completing the cross spawn matchup, it is Rush. Now, as I was saying in the last game, Rush is someone that will consistently 8-rack you. Like, it's not like one of those people that, you know, mixes it in, you know, one out of 20 times, one out of 50 times. We're talking one out of two or three times Rush is going to 8-rack you. That's how often he does his build. And because of that, I think actually Soma should consider going for the same opener. 12 pool, 11 pool. Because it's now more likely that Rush may actually 8 racks. And as I say that, there goes that SCV. But it's a deep. Okay, no 8 racks this time. So now, hopefully, we get to see Soma going for a 12 hatch. But an interesting depot placement because, as every Terran player knows, that is not going to be Ling tight from any angle. Whether you put it off to the right side, or you, whether you put it off or put it on top of the depot, none of those positions are completely wallable. So this is going to be what I call the ample wall. It is going to be sort of tight, but there will be a couple gaps. And we do have the same opener so far from Soma. It's another 11 pool. Now, we do have a little bit of a deviation from Rush. He's scouting much faster this time. And again, Soma, fast gas. And like I was saying last game, this will give you the option to go for Lurkers if you can push the SCV out. Now, Rush, not that I expected it to be a gas follow-up, but I do want to point out that he did not go for something crazy like 1-1-1. Builds like 111 can become more powerful when you have walls because all of a sudden you're not so fragile versus masslings. But that's not what he's going for this time. And the SCV is going to find Soma at the second position. But will Lings be out to hold the ramp? And the answer is going to be... Again, he doesn't care about holding the ramp. For me, as someone that watches Soma a decent amount of time and knowing his reputation, this seems like a bit of a mistake to just let them in and know what you're doing. But he's at least pushed the SCV out for a little bit of time. But the Lings are now moving across the map. And again, because it's only four Lings, he doesn't have to build a bunker to defend. He can consistently pump out of one Rax to defend. This time, though, I think the gas is a little bit faster from Rush, so he must have something else planned this time. This could actually be eBay. Maybe he felt like the stim in a fast range didn't help that much versus the Mutalist, because remember, Rush still lost his entire worker line at the natural. So maybe now he just wants to get plus one faster. We don't see an eBay or an Academy yet. At this point, the eBay should have been built, so I do think it's going to be Academy again. The drone has done a good job to push out or to weaken the SCV, I mean. But he does confirm that the Spire is done. Or, not the Spire, the Lair is done. But, the drone didn't actually build a Spire. So now, actually, Rush may be worried like, hey, did you sneak a Hydrogen at the Natural? Are you doing something, something sneaky? But it's actually the Spire just at the Natural. Now, is that a factory? That is a factory. Okay. Well, you guys know I'm going to be taking note of this build because I am a big believer in fast tech build. But versus a 12 gas like this? I don't know, man. Valkyries are not going to be out in time. That's 100% certain. If a Valkyrie's not going to be out in time, Vessel also not going to be out in time. So I was thinking maybe this could be Goliaths, but Goliaths aren't going to be out in time either. So I'm not sure exactly what this follow-up is going to be. I actually think it's got to be Vessels. I, I just I just kind of have a feeling that it has to be Vessels. So we'll see what the follow-up follow up actually is. eBay coming in. 
It's a little bit faster than usual. It is an armory. I'm shocked that it's an armory. Because first off, Valkyrie is very expensive. It's going to be hard to manage your marine count while also building Valkyries and turrets. You got to remember, all three of those units are high mineral intensive units. So I was thinking it had to be Vessel. But not going to be the case. We do have Soma again building a third hatch while doing this. He's also recovered his worker count quite well. Compared to last game, he's now at 22. Compared to, I think it was 20 when the first couple of Mulus went out. So he does have a little bit better econ this time. Even though he's had the Spire done, no Mutalus out in the field just yet. So instead, he's powered a little bit more. And the scan is going to go off. And now that he seen, sees these Mutalus being built and these eggs uh, still not morphed, I actually think Rush knows that, hey, you snuck in a couple more drones that you're not supposed to have. And now, all of a sudden, this Valkyrie play, which would have been... I don't think late is the right word, but... Um, Somewhat delayed versus a 12 gas muta play. All of a sudden, the Valkyrie play is going to be on time. And there's turrets everywhere. So there's no angle to attack here as Soma. Maybe he can pick off a depot, but I can tell you Terran does not care about losing a depot at this point in the game. He'll just easily rebuild that. And Soma, man, still continuing to drone. This time around, he instantly goes into Hydrogen. I, I like this way better. It's going to obviously nullify the Valkyries because, hey, Valkyries aren't going to help you versus Hydra this at all. Hydra, I mean, um, Valkyries are not like Corsairs. You're not going to be sending them out to just go kill Overlords in the mid game. That's, that's just not a thing. If Valkyries were more responsive, yeah, we could channel our inner Protoss. But the fact that they have the deceleration and can easily die discouraged, yeah, you're not going to see that. So these Valkyries, maybe not going to be dead weight, but... Definitely not going to be very impactful, I don't think. Well, we've got an unload on the bunker. I think it's just going to be defensive. Yeah, he's just going to try and defend this Rax. I don't think he can move out at this point. Sick Beatles, two Scourge. So this is really not a big middle from Soma. And this is this is more along the lines of what I was expecting to see from Soma coming into this series. He, you know, he shows you something, but that's not the strategy. You've got to react to him now. You've got to react to him now not committing to mutas and transitioning into Hydra Lurker, probably. When your Rax count is low, when you've got these Valkyries, which don't really help you anymore. And Zerg's Econ is pretty big, actually, despite the opener. Regardless, though, Rush, he is going to move out. This is a very, very fragile army. It is one group of Marine Medic. It is two Valkyries. Of course, it's enough to deal with Mutalus, that's for sure. But what I mean is if there had been, maybe let's say 12 lanes, I think that army could have gotten overrun. Regardless, we've got three Valkyries moving out with the Marine Medic. We're probably going into four or five racks as Terran. Terran's Econ is pretty damn good, 35 SCVs. You're only really looking to get around 37 to 40, so he's pretty well saturated at this point. I think the factory does have an add-on for tanks. If I remember, the factory was at the natural, and it looks like there was an add-on there. Now, there's only two Sunkins, and there's still, okay, there we go, there's Lurkers just in the nick of time. I was sitting there like, dude, did we not build Lurkers again? You know this guy's already built Valkyries, but this time around he did build Lurkers, and that means that this base is secured. And the fact that it's on the low ground means that if we get to late game, Zerg will be able to easily take their fourth base. I'm really liking Soma's position. I think he does need to be worried about one thing, though. It's because he is still stuck on Lair Tech, and the fact that Rush is building tanks and the Valkyries still actually exist, Tank Valkyrie push could be quite dangerous. There we go, this is the natural now. Soma racking up a couple kills. Rush again with patented patrol micro on the, on the Valkyrie. Really well done. Really good defense from, from Terran. Meanwhile, what's that? Queen's Nest and Evolution Chamber. Okay. So I do like Soma's strategy. But his econ seems a little... Well, econ's not the right word. His his amount of fighting units seems 
quite low. Like, if, if he had another macro hatch where he could pump out more units, I would like his position much better. But at this point, I am a slightly worried that he's not going to be able to defend the incoming tank push. Yes, he has four lurkers here. And yes, they could be great if he can get off a hold position move. But he scanned and he saw that the lurkers are here. Is he going to really try and fight this? Oh, it's Fox, man. He's splitting very well. He basically just flat out killed all the lurkers or half the lurkers with just Marine Medic. He didn't lose almost any Marines there. Didn't even use his tanks. And now, now that he's bled off three lurkers, he didn't do any damage to the tanks. He didn't even pick off a single one. He also didn't pick off the vessel. How do you stop this army? I also don't even think Rush had to use his Irradiate. So he can use it on the vessel or on the lurkers now. He, of course, can use it on Midas, too, if he needs to. But how are you? Okay, that was a great, really good Irradiate. Oh, my gosh, he did so much damage. And there's the Siege. He's going to kill one Lurker. Two. Almost gets two Lurkers. Soma desperately trying to buy time. But there's, those views were just so softened up. So softened up by that single Irradiate. Now, that's a really good last shot from the Lurker. But the Mutas are just so damaged. They're just so damaged. And you gotta remember, behind this, there's the Valkyrie. And second, Rush is on five racks. Hey, this is a lot of production. Zerg has one macro hatch, does not have Hive done, does not have Defilers anywhere near being done. Okay, good hold position lurker player. Not hold position, just, just a little random lurker. Does take down 10 Marines or so. Oh man, Mutas are getting eviscerated by this Marine Medic Ball. He did buy a lot of time. Like, the fact that Terran's still not at the at the third base just yet is an okay sign for Zer for, for Terran, or for Zerg, I mean. But these Irradiates, man, they're doing ridiculous amounts of damage. Here, and now the tanks are set up. There's no Nidus here either, I just noticed. This base feels like it's gonna be gunzo. The Mutas are so low. He's got to engage, though, because he can't just sit here. The tanks will just eventually kill the hatchery if he just sits here. The supplies are really close, 94 to 90. But unfortunately, the comp is just not good. That, again, that's a lot of mutilists, but you can't engage. It's just impossible. I actually think that this base is just 100% dead. Maybe if he countered, he could do something. Oh, well, he's going to try and fight. Lilings, I think. I think those are like No, those are Mutas at top middle. Okay, now what's that in the back? Okay, two Lurkers, four Lings. Is it enough? Is it enough to try and help deal with this army? Rush, uh, another great Irradiate, and more units coming in from the backside. They're going to intercept, and this just means he's just going to have a 360 surround on the Lurker. And those lurkers all die. Mutas are gonna die. The tanks, none of the tanks. Okay, now one of the tanks died. Second one died. But the hatch is dead, and that's all Rush really needed. Also, Zerg lost 12 workers at top middle. So that's a big eco loss. We do have a few Hydras moving out desperately trying to do something, but I don't even know if the Defiler Mound ever started. It, it never started. Man, that's painful. And there it is. GG. The vessel count's too high. The defiler is too late. And we've got Rush. 2-0 in the series. So he's getting a little bit of redemption from ASL a few seasons ago. Doing really well. And even though I do think Soma's opener can be good, clearly Rush knows the counter to it. And he is not being mind gamed by Soma at all. Oh, you're going 11 pool? Well, the chances of you mixing in a couple drones here are quite high. So even though my Valkyrie's gonna be late, I'm still gonna go for it, right? Like, he's reading Soma very well. I'm just very confused with the four links. Like, the four links are never gonna do damage. All it's really getting you is, like I said, it's gonna shut down eight racks, that's obvious, but other than that, what it, what is it going to do? Like, it's going to force two Marines before an expansion. But Terrans are fine with doing that. That's just a, a normal opener. They don't mind building two Marines before building their command center. I'm not too 
sure about this variation of his 11 pool. I would really like to see him hold the position on the ramp and then make Rush death at what the build or crit. Just my opinion, Rush obviously, or Soma obviously, light years better than I am. So our third map will be Retro. Cruiser taking a little bit of a break here, but we'll be back in just a moment. The Retro, historically, at least in tournaments, ASL and now this, very good. Aaron versus are very, very good, especially if you're someone that can play race style or any type of one base style or eight rack style, which we know Rush can do. He is someone that, in my experience, doesn't play race or tech builds that often, at least on one base. I think Doma should consider going for 12 hatch this time. If he thinks that eight racks is not going to happen, then 12 hatch could be good. So let's get into game three. And it's going to be retro. This could potentially be the last game of the day. Unless Doma can strike a comeback right here. So in the top right, again, with cross bonds, we've got Rush. And in the bottom left, so far these early pool builds are not working at all. It is Toma. Now as a Terran player, I gotta say it, top right, Rush got very lucky. This is one of the positions that you can full wall. That makes it very, very strong. And it also makes eight rocks very fun. You can proxy it, you know, not necessarily proxy it, but forward it a little bit, and then float it back into position and complete your wall. So far, no STV movement. There we go. And he does send it out at 48. Now, generally, if you're going to wall your natural, you send it out at 48. I'm gonna assume that this is a depot. And there it is. So it is going to be depot. No eight racks this time. And Soma, again, Overlord, so no nine pool. We're still waiting to see, will it be for the third time in a row, another 11 pool game? Or are we gonna finally have a hatch first opener? Two drones, okay. 11 hatch? Okay, 11 hatch from Soma. Interesting. We know that he's obviously an innovator of all the hatch timings, not just in Zerg versus Protoss, but also Zerg versus Terran. Rush with the racks or the wall as expected in Soma. Is he going to go for the typical two minute gas? Two minute pool is really all we're waiting for. I actually wouldn't hate to see something like a three hatch build. Rush has clearly been able to deal with the low econ Zerg style that Soma's been throwing at him. So because of that, I would actually like to see Soma try and sneak a third hatch type of play, whether it's him taking another base or him just building a hatch in the main. I think either one could be fine. We have come and gone the two minute mark on the, on the game. Never mind. I actually thought we were gonna get a third hatch, but it is just gonna be a delayed gas here, 215 gas. That means that this is most likely gonna be the 2.5 hatch gas play. 2.5 hatch play, I mean. And Soma's gonna see the bad news that, hey, Rush got top right. And that means that he'll be able to expand off of just one Marine. Now, what is Soma's response going to be? You know, there are ways to punish racks play like this, where you wall your natural, and you don't build Marines. Uh, you know, at least not that many Marines. We've seen players like Jadong actually hydra bust moves like this but because you are playing soma and you 100 percent know he has a move like that in your arsenal or in his arsenal i mean we do see rush building a second rax in his main i think that's smart despite having the wall where he could have rushed plus one ebay i think getting the second rax is good to make sure that he doesn't die to some type of crazy all-in with the hydras from soma in Soma's main, I don't think that we actually have a Hydra Den being built. I think we've just gone into normal gas, or I mean normal lair timing. Yep, there's the lair. And, yep, everything very normal. But 
one thing to point out about Rush's build was this is a 320 Academy, extremely quick. So this could be a stim across the map type of game where he wants to just end it immediately. Third hatch coming down for Soma in his main. Pretty typical. And SCB is going to get in and see everything. And he's going to see that, hey dude, you built no lings, you have no sunken. Just now you're building lings? That's pretty greedy. He also is going to see the spire timing. So he sees literally everything. He also knows that Zerg doesn't even have speed either. And Rush maybe rushing out onto the map in the next couple seconds now that he knows that there's actually no defense for Zerg. Okay, he may have caught a glimpse of a couple more Link being built, so that may dissuade him from moving out if... Nope, it is not. I was going to say if he had seen, you know, a couple more Links, he may be thinking, oh, maybe this guy's building a lot of Links, but not going to be the case. And look at this, he has snuck around the side Wow, a fourth hatch going down for Soma. So he's really greeting for this. He's going to try and get up a fourth hatch at mid left. That's his third base. If he can get this up and running, he's obviously going to have a lot of access to a lot of larva. But how's he going to hold this? He only has, what is it, six lanes? His spire's not done. Of course, Rush doesn't know about this. But if he was to find mid left, I feel like that's a free kill for him. Scan goes off, but it was not at mid left. Scan's the natural and the main, and he does see more lings being built. Okay. So he knows that a ton of lings were being built. This may signal to Rush that, hey, this guy must have taken another base, and he felt desperate to build a lot of lings because he couldn't hold it. Not sure exactly what he's thinking, but maybe thinking along those lines. Either way, now that he scanned and saw that no mutas were being built, he doesn't have to build turrets, which means he can streamline his build even better. He's already on four Raxes. He could consider building a factory also. So what's the play? Is he gonna rush into the factory? He's gonna move out. This Marine count is pretty big. What's it, like 15 Marines, four medics? Some of you can't engage this man. You just can't do it. He's gonna have to except that the Terran is just gonna have this massive army. He's gonna have to try and whittle it down with some mutilists, but he still doesn't have very many. I think he has the first two out on the map. Okay, first four. This is gonna be really hard. Terran's got two groups of Marine Medic. Well, maybe not two, maybe one and a half. And these four mutilists are definitely not gonna be enough. I think in Russia's main, we have a fifth Rax, and I think he did just start his factory, but he has no turrets at his natural. He has really streamlined this build to build as many units as possible. Now Soma's sharking around, trying to find the angle, but there just is none. He picks off one Marine, but this is, this is a huge army for this point in the game. He obviously has all the upgrades, stim and range. Another little stim goes off. Okay, he picks off a couple Marines there. That's good. And I like what Soma's doing. Sitting between the rally point and where the Marines actually are. Prevents reinforcements from moving up. So that's really, really good. And I like the Overlord at the top middle, giving vision. So he'll see when Karen actually moves across the map. So overall, this is really good recovery from Soma. He's now got his third base up and running. He's got a macro hatch. So he's got a lot of production capabilities. He's got hydrogen coming down and he's got queen stuff coming. Meanwhile, it's not like Rush slouched on his build. He's crushing his build. But I thought that he may be able to actually kill Soma with his first move out. So looks like both players are gonna stabilize at this point and we may actually get into a normal mid and late game. The Muta is doing decent damage. Just keeping Terran at bay for now. I think that's all you really can do. Well, actually, maybe not. I think he could actually jump on this army. He's got so many lings from the beginning, he may be able to actually kill it. Instead, he is just going to consistently use these mutilists to just be annoying. No need to overcommit here. Queen's Nest is done. Hive is coming. Okay, starting to look like a normal game. Well, 
Okay, Lings, is it time? Is it time? Oh, he, he's engaging, but Terran just synced up with a third group of Marines. And that means that this army is not going to be able to overwhelm the Terran. Really good reinforcement from Rush. Nice attempt from Soma, but in the end, not going to hit when he needed to. We've got science facility basically done. Vessel's gonna be coming out pretty soon. I think I saw a floated factory, so no tanks this game. Rush is crushing it in his eco. 46 SCVs. That's really good for two bases. And because of that, we've got six barracks coming in. Maybe even seven. And these lanes are setting up like they want to go for a counter attack. We've got second eBay coming in, so no mech transition out of this. It is going to be bio play. That's pretty much what you expect when you see Rush games. This guy is a bio man through and through. And here comes that counter. Is there anything in the bunker? Answer was no. Good reaction there to stim it up. Good scan spots. There's no sunkins. Defiler mound coming down. That is a lot of bio. Trying to get a read on how many marines that is. Looks like maybe 15 plus 6 or 7 medics. Still legitimately two groups of units here. Lurkers in the nick of time. And Soma now secured his natural secured his third base has good eco has massive eco actually look at those drones Ooh, good catch in the center mutas and ling catch a group of marines well done there and now what do you do as rush seems like his pressure has been thwarted he's not necessarily all in with six racks but generally when you go for a six racks play you're looking to deal crippling damage somewhere but there's just really not a lot of opportunity to attack I guess drops could be good. Just simply looking at the map, there doesn't see a lot of seem to be a lot of vision on the bottom side of Soma's base. But there's so much macro production, I actually don't think drops would be a good a good choice this game. I think the best thing you can do is expand, and it seems like that's exactly what Russia is going for. He's got SC going to mid right, but Oming is going to instantly kill it. We do have a lot of bio moving out. He does have energy for double D matrix, but instead he's going to use it on double irradiate. Now there's no way that he can engage this, right? That would be such a crazy move. If he's got plus one armor, maybe, maybe. Is he going to go for it? The fact that he scanned, okay, we're going for it. No. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a wise decision, Rush. That's like one of the tiniest jokes on retro. Definitely don't want to be running into five lurkers. More irradiates go off though. It should knock down one or two more. Zerg doing a good job to, you know, kind of control the center of the map right now. Oh, okay, now he's going. There's only three lurkers. The Lings and the Mutas are out of position. I still think there's too many lurkers. Yeah, there's way too many lurkers. You cannot get through there. And Rush will be denied. And the Ling that killed mid right or killed the mid right SCV means that there's still no command center being built over there. So Rush is still committed on two bases. He does need to try and transition out of this because Zerg is pretty big. They've got their hive tech. It's going to be hard to face three base Zerg with macro hatches, with big econ, unless you can get a third base yourself. Also, Zerg got double upgrades. Everything looks really good for Zerg. So finally, a Marine ball is going to move and take out that Ling. Allow Terran to finally get their third base. Vessel count is starting to get ridiculous. It's like six right now, and there's the dropship that I was expecting to see. Scan goes off top left. I think Rush is kind of confused at what Zerg is doing. Like, yes, you have three bases. Yes, you've got big econ. But what's your plan to get a fourth base? Generally, Terran players aren't really scared of three base Zerg. What they're scared of is the four baser, where they can start flooding ultras and hydras and lurkers and defilers, all those high gas intensive units nonstop. If it's only three, Zerg's gonna mine out in their nat gas and main gas pretty soon. So they're gonna be back down to, you know, one and a half gas, uh, gas bases, which Terran's just not worried about. So Zerg needs to come up with some, some type of plan to get a fourth base. We've got Dark Swarm and Hydras as the follow-up. So it's going to be Hydra Lurker Defiler as the comp. 
Everybody knows I'm a big fan of that specific comp. Muta harassment at mid right. Going to kill these Marines and shut down this base again. This is really, really good for Soma. Radiate goes down. Ooh, double radiate goes down. And he took a ton of damage on those Mutalists. Rush starting to get a supply lead, but 140 versus almost 120 for Zerg. Really, Zerg's in a good spot. More Marine, more Medic versus these Hydras. Looks like he kind of missed that. Where's his Defiler? Like, I, I consistently see Hydras, but I don't really see that many Defilers with his army, if at all. Huge Terran army. But Hydra Lurker can be dangerous to fight with just Marine Medic. If you get plagued one time, all of a sudden all your units are just one-shottable. Dark Swarm, where's the plague though? Need the plague. Good to radiate. Gonna take down the Defiler, but there's obviously another one behind it, and he's gonna continue to move. We've got tanks coming down. Actually, double factory for Terran. So he's gonna try and transition into Marine Medic Tank. Soma's floating a lot of minerals, man. He's got 2,500 minerals. But he's pretty much completely gas starved. This is what I was talking about, where Terran's just not too concerned if Zerg's only on three bases, because they just don't have the gas to support an overwhelming amount of any of the high-tech units. The vessel count, what is it, like six or seven, something along those lines? That's, I think, the most concerning part about this game, is the fact that the vessel count I at least don't remember seeing a vessel die, has just not been reset at any point, which means he can just irradiate over and over and over and over. Okay, tanks. Wow, the tanks are very far forward. I don't know about this. Like, yes, tanks are the counter to Hydras, but you gotta have the critical mass tanks. Who is not the critical mass? Okay, he does actually save one of the hydro or one of the defilers but now it's gonna get taken down by the irradiate rush actually double expanded he's taking top middle while also taking mid right so he's gone from having you know basically mined out main to natural to having fully saturated third and fourth base and bottom middle got scanned and it looks like okay, so there is gonna get there in time in the space but still there's just so many irradiates available the, the comp of Terran is starting to get really, really good. There's so much stuff just in the center of the map, making sure that there's no counterplay there, while also pressuring bottom middle. Terran, I think, is in a good spot. There we go. Takes down one of the lurkers. Bye. This is a rough situation from Soma. Like, I, I think his comp is good. I think Hydra Lurker Ling Defiler is good, but he's just not making any any headway anywhere. Like, he's on the back foot the entire game. And if, if Terran gets four bases with double, triple, potentially quadruple factory and double starport, you know, you're just gonna be in trouble with this Hydra Lurker comp because the tank house is gonna be infinity at some point. There's a plague that goes off. Finally, we get a good plague onto some of the Marines. He does start popping some of these vessels, so that's good. Finally, we're making some headway here. And mid right, I think, has no defense right now. Of course, Zerg doesn't know that, but there is almost no defense at that position. There's four Marines, a couple medics, one fire at. That's an open base right now, but not gonna be able to capitalize on that lack of defense. Two tanks coming over to help defend also. The center of the map, you're just not getting through here. Rushes. Just a wall here saying, you will not pass, sir. Engagement. All right, good play. Really good play. He's going to lose his defiler for that, but he does plague a lot of the Marines. Zerg did get their fourth base now. So that's good. Still has good econ. Still has like, what is it? Like seven and a half production. Something along those lines. Ooh, another vessel falls. That's nice. Now the vessel count is manageable. It's only four right now. The tank count is starting to get scary. We're approaching five. Probably, you know, he's got a couple more in his main, so maybe like seven to ten. 
And Rush is just patrolling back and forth, just saying like, hey, you're just not going to get another base. Like, that's just not going to happen. Random Hydra at top left. Mm, that's a, another juicy play. Oh no. Oh no, he's going to lose multiple defilers. <laughs> this will count as massive. Oh, he's starting to move his tanks too. Oh man. Oh, this might be the game ending move. Soma's just running out of steam. He's still got high supply, but he just has no way to engage any of this army. The tanks are now in position. The vessel count is still decent. Marine Medic are getting across the map without any, you know, denial at all. Okay, looks like we've got a counterattack to top middle. Oh, we've got a sandwich. The Dihydralis, those tanks at the bottom. It's like it's almost taking bottom right, but what I mean is there's, I think those tanks in the center of the map right there, okay, they just had to re-siege backwards to make sure that they don't die. Uh, but we've got a siege on the mid-left base. Losing all the scourge, not great. Clutch D swarm, or dark swarm right there. Oh, multiple, multiple vessels going down. Really nice. Really, really nice. Another dark swarm, okay. Taking out three vessels plus like four tanks. That's really good. And Soma has bottom right coming up, but it did get spotted. So you have to keep that in mind. I think there's actually a drop to bottom middle right now. Looks like there was, there is a drop going on right there and not sure exactly how much damage it's dealing, but we can see that the drone count is dropping down to 45. So it looks like you got like seven or eight drones there. More Terran streaming across the map. He's got the three, two upgrades. It's a lot of tanks. There's not that many fire bats in the army though. So he's gonna have to unseage, reposition. Didn't actually unseage that much, but does reposition. This is just such a hard position for Zerg to get in. Every time we look at his army, the army size just looks so tiny. Dark Swarm, we need it. There it is. Fire bats and Marines. Oh, and at the same time, Terran's going for a counter at mid-left. He's going to sack his tanks, but he's going to try and find the opening at mid-left. Is there an opening, though, is the question. And he's gotten up the ramp. Oh, there's no Dark Swarm. There's a dropship also going at the same time. There's no Fire Bats, so Dark Swarm is going to hold the line. Dropship into the natural, maybe, into the main. Okay, we're going into the main. Not sure exactly what happened to the drop at bottom middle, but it seems like that got shut down. And now we've got a drop in the main base. Can this open up an opportunity for Rush to kill a base? He knows about bottom right. Remember, he scouted it with a couple Marines, but he hasn't made any movement over there to go and send it up. Uh, try and knock it down. The vessel count, only four now. Not that strong. We're not having, you know, the infinite irradiates that just kill a million hydras, workers, and defilers over and over. The tank count also been reset. I think actually Soma, if he can get this bottom base up and running, bottom right, he's in an okay position. We've got a, a small engagement here. Yeah, Hydra are gonna clean this up. I think this was a diversion though. I think he's using this to draw attention so he can get to mid left. And there's nothing here. But again, there's no fire bats. This base also is not that important anymore. Like, this is a mined out base. The Queen's Nest doesn't matter. The Evolution Chamber doesn't matter. He's already got his upgrades. I guess the one thing that does matter is the Hydrogen. But not a, not a critical base. But regardless, Soma's going to try and save it. This is going to be the meat grinder, though. Coming up that ramp with no Dark Swarm, no Lurk. Oh my gosh, he's losing everything. And we do have just a scroll down to the main. Not sure if there was a drop that we missed, but... See so a hatchery, mid-left is dead. So uh, he's running out of steam, man. Oh, single marine in the back of that mineral line. Looks like he got a couple of marine kills, and we're starting to see a big gap up in terms of supply. It's now 188 to 111. I guess one saving grace for Soma is if he can somehow survive, Rush is still only on two bases. But there's just so much terror. All those defilers dying, lurkers dying, hydras dying. We've got a big attack to bottom right. 
he is going to send more units to the bottom right. Whoa, what was that? Look at those Marines! <laughs> so the reason that can happen in this game is if units are right next to each other and they try and like get around each other, they're, they're not able to do that, so they just speed up, if I remember correctly. Anyways, we've got an attack at bottom right. The Lurkers end up killing off a lot of the army. This attack is going to get fended off, but there's just so much Terran at bottom right. He can just avoid those two Lurkers. The gas dies. There is not very many fire bats here, so maybe the Hydras and Lurkers can fend this off for now. I actually think it's just a, a matter of time at this point. There's so many Irradiates. The supply count is huge. It's 175 to 95. Rush still has control over the center. The vessel's gonna irradiate a couple of these lurkers. They're actually only gonna irradiate the filer. Another good dark form. He's fending, he's fending off very well. Like, he's doing a really good job with what he has. It's just, how much longer can he hold on? Karen's just relentless with the non-stop aggression. There's a drop in the main also at bottom left. Uh, okay, that one lurker probably gonna save the day. But Rush is just everywhere. Bottom right, bottom middle, main. Plagues are really good. He's plagued all the vessels. Uh, he needs to get on top of those vessels. Oh, get on top of them. Get on top. He gets a tank. Fire bats stem in. Pop the vessel, pop the vessel. Not able to get those few hits though. Look at Soma's gas. He has no gas, dude. He has no gas. He can't afford to build more lurkers or defilers. The defiler pops out in the nick of time. Hydras. Oh, there's some fire bats mixed in. And they're under the dark swarm, so they should be able to win the fight. Marines avoiding the dark swarm into the into the mineral line now. Man, look at those fire bats that do work. Three fire bats in a dream. That's all you need. This base is going to fall. And what I was hoping to be a close series, this is most likely going to be... Oh, actually, it's not going to be the end. Actually, that plague, those plague marines all got crushed. But he's on the on the doorstep of bottom middle now. The filer is going to get irradiated. He's going to have to retreat. Oh, oh! He's going to lose a lot of vessels here. Oh, the, the key thing here is that the medics ended up surviving. The key thing here is that Rush is a macro god and he just has so much stuff and eventually is going to overrun this base. The Hydras here are going to try and buy some time, but it doesn't matter, man. This base is dead. And there it is. GG comes out. And Soma, he is going to be knocked out 3-0. Rush getting redemption from his ASL tournament a couple seasons ago. I feel a little bit bad for Soma because I did like his build orders. His strategies were really good and he was in a good position. In the last game, you've got a third base, you've got massive econ, you kept Terran's third base delayed for a long time, you end up getting a fourth base, but he just could not get rid of those vessels and the tanks in the mid game. I think that was really the detriment to him there. If he could somehow whittle it down earlier on where he could secure a fifth base, he would have been in a fine position. But you know, it is what it is. Sometimes that happens, and you gotta give props to Rush because he played extremely well, especially in the Luna game. I can't believe how, how well he played that game. So we are going to look at the result. We see, of course, it's a 3-0. Was not expecting that. I was expecting maybe at best like a 3-1 for either side. And Rush, he is gonna be moving on. So let's look at how the bracket is going to line up. We've got Rush coming out in first. It's 3 to no, 3 to 0, snow 3 to 0. Hope that this is not a 3 to 0 round of 8 for every single matchup. That would be a bit disappointing because a lot of these players are, you know, very even in skill. Like, I could see every single series going 3 2, you know. So, Rush in the round of 8. I think what he's got to hope for is you got to hope for Beast coming out. I think Terran versus Protoss versus Best is going to be really rough. Best is so good PVT. He's got all types of styles. He's really good in that matchup. If Beast comes out, uh, Rush, Terran versus Zerg clearly very, very good if he's going to take down Soma. So Rush, um, we'll see. We'll see.
Anyways, in the bottom side, we still got light versus mini remaining. I think actually whoever comes out of that side is probably going to be my my matchup for the round of four. I think snow versus light would be amazing. I think snow versus mini would equally be amazing because we all know snow god tier with with uh, reavers and PvP generally mostly or it used to be mostly about reavers. So that should be an epic, exciting matchup. But that is it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with the next cast, which should be best versus beast in the next few days. And I hope to see you there. Take care.